Hello artists! My name is Jane Hill and I am here to help you make some really cool art while you're home from school during the coronavirus pandemic. Today we are going to be making a really super cool printmaking process called trace monotyping where we literally take a drawing we've made and trace it on a special kind of surface I'll get into later to make a beautiful print. Okay, I'm going to show you one that I made earlier today. This trace monotype I made this morning and it's of a wonderful mythical beast. I think it's actually called a wyvern, a dragon with a big head and no feet or legs. When I came up with my idea for my mythical beast, I was inspired by art of the Middle Ages, including this beautiful uh, illustration you see here of a leopard. This leopard illustration is part of an illuminated manuscript. That is a picture which was used to illustrate a book, in this case a book that told Bible stories and also about real animals and invented mythological animals that the artist was curious about. It was called a bestiary and it was made all the way back in time in the 11 or 1200s. This picture here is of a leopard. And while he might not look 100% realistic, we have to remember that the artist probably had never seen a leopard and was working from his imagination. What I like about it, though, is that this leopard's got personality, and not only that, he really fills the picture plane that he's sitting in, this little blue rectangle. The artist who made him used wonderful curved organic lines that are repeated over and over. The tail beautifully curves and echoes the curve of the leopard's body. And the leopard, while he's simple, isn't boring or plain. There's little details like his claws, his very expressive face, and his colorful to wonderful shade of red. But the simple design, the way he fills the entire picture plane, and he's plain but also detailed, are really good tips for us to think about as we create our drawing for our trace monotype. And that's the first thing you're going to do. You need to get a drawing ready before you do anything else. This drawing here is one that I've made, and again, it's of a sea serpent of some sort, and I made him, hopefully, with some good tips in mind that I learned from the medieval bestiary. My, my drawing is made just with line. There's no shading whatsoever, and that's really important. I don't want to shade just now. I just want a line drawing. It's fairly large. It fills the space. And while it has some detail that you see here and here, it's not incredibly detailed or complex. Finally, there are no words. I'm just using a line drawing. All right, I've got my drawing ready, and I'm going to put that to one side now and gather the materials I need to make my print. The first thing I need is some shoe polish. Any old type of shoe polish that you have around the house should work. Second, I need to get a rag, an old rag, maybe a bit of a towel. I'll need to go to the cupboard and get a cereal box and cut off the front or back panel. Just trim it so I have a piece that's about 8 by 11 inches or so. Next, I'll need some aluminum foil. Okay. I'll need an extra sheet of paper. That's what I'm going to use for my print. And finally, I'll need a ballpoint pen. So let's go ahead and get started. I am very excited. You know, printmaking is a really cool process where you can make multiple copies of a work of art. With monotyping, sometimes that's a little tricky. Sometimes you, you, you usually just get one print with a monotype, but there's tricks that'll help you get multiple images of the same drawing, and we'll find out more about that in a minute. To get started now, my first step is to take my piece of cardboard, and I'm going to wrap my aluminum foil around it. Let's go ahead and do that now. And I'm just going to carefully center my, my cardboard in the foil and then fold around fold it around the edges like I'm wrapping a present. And I find that you know it's really pretty easy. My foil is a little bit bigger than my cardboard so I just fold it around there and it stays in place pretty well. If it feels loose I can always tape it on there but this is simple and no fuss no muss. Alrighty so now I've gone ahead and I have my cereal box cover that is covered with a piece of aluminum foil. You don't have to worry about these little bumps or textures. They'll, they're perfectly okay. Next, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach my foil to this demonstration board. Now you folks are gonna work flat on the table, but so that you can see the video, you're gonna see that I'm gonna put it right here. All right, I'll lay that down for a minute and I'm gonna open up my wonderful shoe polish. Yay! 
I'm going to take my rag and I'm going to really get a nice generous smush of shoe polish on my rag. And guess what? You guessed it. I'm going to apply it now very generously to my aluminum foil covered board. Let's get another smush of it. We want to be really generous and use plenty. And here I go again, still smushing it on. And I just dab it on in a couple of spots and then I go back for more. It's hard to use too much on this because we want a really nice dark print. Okay, here I am dabbing some more on. This is starting to look pretty good. And you know, a tricky thing in this, you want to make sure that you are really covering every inch of your foil. Now you'll notice, I put on a lot of shoe polish, folks, but it doesn't look super dark or black, does it? The only area it really looks dark are in the crevices here, but on most of my aluminum foil, it's sort of a pale gray. You can kind of see here the strokes of my shoe polish application. The shoe polish is there, but it's really pretty light to see. It's not super dark. I'm going to dab on a little bit more. Putting it all over, dabbing it everywhere to make sure that I have plenty on there. Okay, I think that I've got enough now. Again, it still doesn't look super black. So if yours doesn't, don't worry about that. Alrighty, I'm going to pause for a pause here and get a baby wipe. And I'm going to clean off my fingers. Shoe polish is a little tricky to get rid of with soap and water, but baby wipes, I find, really take care of it nicely. And if you scrub your hands with soap and water with a sponge, it will come off. But I don't want to interrupt the video and go to the sink, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it right here. There we go. Much better. Alrighty, now for our next steps. The next thing I need to do is to go in to get that plain piece of paper that I had. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take my plain paper, and I am literally going to stick it on top of my foil like this. So it's right on top of my inked foil. Then I'm going to get my drawing that I made earlier, the drawing of my beast from my bestiary. I'm going to put it on top of here. There we go. So you folks can see I've got three layers. I've got my top layer is my drawing, my middle layer is my paper, and then the bottom layer way down here, that's my aluminum foil covered piece of cardboard. Alrighty, now let's go ahead and let's get a pen and get started. So. I'm going to trace my drawing very carefully. As I do it, I want to be mindful of my hand. I don't want to rub my hand really hard over the surface. If it rests lightly, that's fine, but I need to pay attention. I'm going to start by tracing the outside body of my beast. I'm working in blue, a different colored ink than my drawing, so it's a little easier to see what I have and haven't traced. There we go. Let's pull this up here so you can see a little bit better. And I'm just going to do one section at a time, working on the outside of my beast right here. I guess I better go around and do the little horns I made on this back as spikes. And I'm going to concentrate, like I said, just on the outside of the body. I'm not worried about any of the inside decorations. Right here, my pen slipped and I sort of had a double line, but who cares? That might make it more interesting. So I'm going to keep on going. There we go. Now I have the outside traced. There you are. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trace the inside part of my beast that I made. One section at a time. Oh, he's a fine beast. And when I'm thinking of my beast, I might start thinking as I'm tracing what colors I'm going to apply later when it's time to actually color him. He is a sea dragon of some sort, so maybe he needs to live underwater and be bluish and purple. I don't know. Maybe he could be a water dragon that flies through the air. All of these are things that I can think about as I go ahead and I trace my creature. All of his parts, the inside of his body, the outside of his body. Now, I'm working pretty quickly for the sake of the video, so you don't have to sit here all day and watch me trace him. Now I'll start on the outside designs. Just added a little curl here. I felt like I needed it. But as you're working, folks, it's okay to work pretty slowly. 
you don't have to rush and you want to keep your line very dark very smooth and very continuous that's important if you don't have a pen a pencil will work fine and you could also use a colored pencil that might help you see it I just like the way the pen rolls and feels and goes on the paper so I like using pens but like I said a pencil is fine as long as you press firmly that'll work well I'm not pressing light I'm pressing pretty hard okay now let me check I think I have traced every part of my image I'm very excited ah, taking a little peek on it now alrighty folks it's time for the great reveal now I'm going to take everything apart I'm going to take off my clothespins I'm going to lift away my drawing that I used as the basis for my trace monotype or monoprint and now I'm going to lift my print off of my board and lo and behold with just a bunch of old shoe polish that I had lying around the house I've made a trace monotype what's really cool is that when I study my print I can realize that there were areas where I had a lot of shoe polish really went on well and then areas where maybe I needed to put a little bit more also I can tell where I printed dark and where I printed light now almost immediately I can take my print and start applying color and for this you will need to get some color pencils you could use crowns or markers the print that I made earlier today here I made with colored pencils I use Prismacolors and I use contrasting warm and cool colors to really give my creature some life now this is a monotype it's just one print no other print I make will be exactly like it but if I want to go ahead and make another one I just go ahead and repeat the process I'll have to take off my foil once this is used it's pretty much done and you need to get a new sheet get a new sheet of foil ink it up and then repeat the process so from one starting drawing if I'm patient I can make several prints which are each a monotype they're each unique they're never going to be identical and I can color them in I can share them with my friends I can write stories about them and have a wonderful time making a trace monotype folks I hope that you try this really fun art project at home you're going to end up with a beautiful work of art that looks like this once you apply your color and I wish you luck have a good time creating and I'll see you on the next video bye bye now